Hello, welcome and good evening. And today we have got the snark barker again. So, um, as you all know, this is a Sound Blaster 1.0 or 1.5 clone. And uh, it was beautifully reverse engineered by the guys from TubeTime, who also made the AdLib replica. And uh, last time I assembled this thing and it was more or less complete, but the two SAA1099 chips were missing because I didn't have enough. Uh, I had some for the Game Blaster clone, but not for this one. Also, the volume wheel was still missing and the ESA bracket. As you can see, the volume wheel is here, thanks to Oli, who um, also printed the holder for the action cam. And the ESA bracket is still missing. I'm still looking for a solution for this, because um, having it done professionally by someone is prohibitively expensive. And yeah, still looking for a solution here. Maybe I'll 3D print something. But actually, that's always a bit flimsy, so um, yeah, I'm still working on that. But we can already use this thing, and we can actually compare what the different modes here sound like. So today we will have a listen to Space Quest 3. It was the, I think it was the first adventure game, this or Zagma Kraken, that I played back in late 1990, early 91 on our 286 PC. But of course we only had the PC speaker, so we'll have a listen in a minute to Space Quest 3, the introduction on the PC speaker. So what did I hear the first time I ran that program as a 11 or 12 year old kid? I was still amazed by the graphics and all the stuff, but the sound is crappy on the PC speaker. There are games like Planet X3, which have quite nice uh, PC speaker sound, or Zagman Kraken, for example, has pretty nice intro tune uh, for the fact that the PC speaker is just a beeper. Many mentioned the same, but Space Quest 3 is really weak on that part. Uh, then we will also compare to the Tandy sound card. So all the American guys out there, you probably had some, some Tandy machines and that had much better synthesizer. I also have a video about assembling a Tandy sound card. That's what I recorded that on. So we can compare. That sounds already much better. And then we'll have a listen in turn um, using the Yamaha YM3812, which is the OPL2 synthesizer here, in combination with the um, 3014 DAC. Uh, so this is basically the AdLib module, and we'll compare it to the Game Blaster module, which is basically those two Philips uh, chips here. And funny enough, uh, this version here, let's see if I can show it to you. I think you can see it here. These are even labeled NXP, which is like the semiconductor spin-off from Philips. So these have to be pretty late versions, um, late in their respective life cycle, because I think those were spun off not that long ago. Yeah, but um, they are just like the uh, original Philips branded SAA1099. So we'll have a comparison there. And as a bonus, in the end, we will plug in the MT32 and have a listen on that as well. So basically the progression would be PC speaker and Tandy, which would have been what you got when the game first came out, most of the people would have had. Uh, also AdLib and Game Blaster, which was also um, possible, I think, Space 3 came out late 1988, maybe early 1989. And uh, all those cards were available back then, of course, uh, the Game Blaster and the OPL, as well as the MT32 too, but I think mm, least people had the MT32 because it was way more expensive than all the other cards and most people probably only had the PC speaker or the Tandy sound if you had a Tandy machine. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and have a listen.
Okay, that was pretty minimalistic. And, well, the Tandy actually doesn't sound that bad, I think. But the PC speaker rendition is uh, simple and quite a bit annoying. Uh, so usually when I was a kid I would just turn off the sound because it was really annoying. And it wasn't until, I think, 1994, late 1994, when I saved up enough, enough money to buy a CD-ROM drive and a Jazz 16 based sound card. Um, incidentally, I have one of those now as well in the 386 because it has a lot of in and outputs. But uh, for this video, of course, I used the Snark Barker uh, exclusively to record all the stuff. Uh, to play all the stuff and then record onto the Mac. Now we will have a listen to the SAA Game Blaster version of the Space Quest intro and also the Opel 2 Adlib version. So the SAA is a, I already said that in the, in the other sound card shootout, is a chip that does square wave and that sounds always a bit harsh and very electronic key. Um, but I think it's also kind of like its own flavor and I quite like it actually but uh, the Game Blaster isn't supported by that many games so the Sierra titles are mostly there and a bunch of early Lucasfilm productions as well and some other games but uh, definitely the Adlib OPL2 has so much more support due to Sound Blaster, Adlib and all the clones having having that on board and it uses FM synthesis and that sounds more natural while it's still, you hear that it's a synthesizer, but it has a more varied sound and it's more smooth because it uses sine waves and the frequency modulation to create more complex harmonics. So it sounds much more complex than the SAA if you compare voice by voice, but um, the good thing is this thing does stereo and uh, Already in Space Quest 3, in the introduction, you get some, some panning effects, uh, which we'll see in a, in, in a minute in the introduction, which is quite nice, actually, and that's something that the Opel 2 is missing. The first Sound Blaster Pro actually had two um, of the Opel 2 and the ACs, and you could get stereo sound using that, but there's almost no games that support it, because the second version, the Sound Blaster Pro 2.0, didn't use the uh, OPL2 anymore, but the OPL3, and having only one chip, which is also smaller in an SMD package, is so much cheaper than putting two of those massive things and two DACs on, on board. So that was very short-lived. Um, some other cards like the Pro Audio Spectrum 16, uh, or maybe not even the 16, maybe the older variant, they also had two OPL2s on there. But we're not quite compatible to the Soundbuster Pro 1.0. So that was like a dead end. As was the Game Blaster chip, so on the 1.0 they were equipped, on the 1.5 the sockets were there, uh, on the 2.0 you also still had the sockets, but neither the Soundbuster Pro nor every other card after that would have the sockets for the SAA. And Creative said, yeah, this was more or less a failure commercially, but the AdLib compatibility took off. And the rest was history, as was AdLib the company, because Creative stomped them into the ground, basically. But, um, yeah, Creative still around, does still stuff on the PC side of things with audio, uh, USB, whatever, sound cards. But I think this is a nice piece of history, and now let's have a listen to both synthesizers. Thank you. 
Okay, so that was the different versions for PC Speaker, Tandy, Adlib, and SAA Game Blaster for Space Quest 3, one of my favorite adventure games of all time. And I think this showed quite nicely what an upgrade the Sound Blaster card was at the time. Um, it was so much better. And especially games like Space Quest didn't even, I mean, back then the Sound Blaster wasn't out yet, but they didn't even use the functionality like the DSP chip for speech that was possible only one or two years later. So this is a really versatile card. You have a game port and MIDI port, you have microphone input, you have two different synthesizer chips, you have the sampling um, speech and whatever sound effect capabilities. It's It was really a game changer, so it was no wonder that it was uh, a big hit and there were a lot of companies cloning the cards, uh, building their own versions. Yeah, so this makes the Snack Barker almost complete. Isa Bracket is still the only thing missing. Uh, as a bonus, you get now the uh, introduction with the MT32 music, which is, in my opinion, the best version, but that's again one step up in the price range. And most people wouldn't have had that back at the time in the day. Nowadays you can even emulate that stuff on your PC. Okay, so if you like this, please hit the like or the dislike button if you didn't like it. Share this on your social media, in your Facebook group, whatever. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. This will help greatly in the future. And that's all. See you next time.